but I'm telling you, for people that get overwhelmed, it's a way that works so well. It's like, this is the space, this is what I want. Hey Zesties, I'm Michelle Boyle and welcome or welcome back to my channel Zesty Girl. In today's video, there's no doubt about it. If you want a simplified, organized home life where you can enjoy motherhood and your family and live your best zesty life, then you need to stop decluttering. Yes, you heard it. Stop decluttering. I have spent decades watching all the videos, reading all the books, studying every method, constantly hearing that we need less stuff. And less stuff is going to lead to a clean, organized, tidy home where I can relax, feel calm and enjoy my family and enjoy my life. So we're constantly told the road to this is get rid of the clutter, get rid of the excess, the duplicate, and essentially all the stuff that has no purpose in our life. But in today's video, while focus decluttering is amazing and can be amazing, I'm here to tell you that for me it wasn't the answer and this may be why you are failing. So today I want to share with you the three key steps to a simplified life. Things that I discovered, the things that really helped me. So let's stop decluttering just for the sake of it. And let's talk about something different instead. So if you want to see this video, then let's do this. So maybe like many of us, you have attacked that pantry, you've attacked that wardrobe, you have attacked that drawer. Success, only to find yourself no more organized and nothing actually running better than it did before. So if this is you, stop decluttering and let me go through the three steps. So step one is to pick a particular area that you want to work on and evaluate the space. You need to look at the space and make it optimal for our lifestyle. Now for me, every space needs to cater for a family of six. So it has to function with a lot of traffic. So my spaces always have to be with that in mind, that you're going to have six individuals using quite often the same area and they all have different needs. So for me, it's about making it work for our family and for our lifestyle. So go into a space or choose a space and, and look at the space and we need to make the space work for you. We need it to be vibey, your vibe. Don't worry about what someone else says in any other video or any book about what that space should look like. You need it to work for you. And one thing I've realized with working with, with all my different clients is everyone's different. There is nobody that has the same needs and there's no one whose kitchen I've set up the same. Everyone's spaces are completely different. Forget the correct way to declutter. Forget all the correct rules. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to function the best for you and your family. So you may want to ask yourself some questions. So with this area, what's my end goal for this area? So what do I want this wardrobe to feel like? What sort of style do I want? What is working at the moment? What's not working? How could it work better? How much less stuff do I think I need in this area to be an area that brings me joy, makes me feel good about life, and makes me feel good about myself? So just jot down some of those questions and I'll put them down in the description below so that you've got a guideline to follow. It doesn't need to be perfect. Focus on what really truly adds value to you and let go of the rest of your stuff with purpose and also immediately. Don't move the stuff that you're decluttering to another area and make the other area the next problem. But remember our goal is always ultimately to free our time. Allow us to have a living environment that's clean, tidy, organized and simplified and brings us calm and joy. It's not about aesthetically pleasing Pinterest ready solutions but rather something that supports you and your family practically and emotionally. Okay so before we get on to number two I just want to say that if you're enjoying this content please subscribe to my channel it's completely free. This is new content for my channel now that I'll be mixing in with some of my regular content Okay, now back to number two, which is mindful acquisitions. We need to stop bringing into our home excess items that we don't need, that we don't love, that we're not going to enjoy. If we do, if there is a moment that we bring something in and we realize that it was for just for that moment or it's not going to be needed, we need to let it go. We need to be able to learn to let these things go. And it's really hard, but part of the problem is not just the clutter that we have in our homes. It's the items that we keep bringing in. I mean, I'm a classic example. I know there's six people that live here, but I have decluttered 80% of our belongings and I have been looking around now going, I almost need to start again and go room by room. Because there's things that, you know, they sneak in. Everything sneaks in. It's like, when did these things sneak in? But they do. That's living and that's life. So does every item that come in serve a purpose and bring joy? It doesn't have to, it's not essential, but the more we start thinking along these lines, I think the less clutter that we start bringing into the house. It sounds boring, doesn't it? But it works really well. I've been doing it for the past year and I have cut down the amount of items that I'm bringing into the home. In fact, I just yesterday did an Amazon order and I bought in 
four or five things that I thought about for a while that I had done my homework on and when I finally got them I've had so much joy that I had these items and normally when I used to go to Kmart and buy things it was so sort of random it was just oh that looks like that will be fun and that looks like that will be great and maybe I need one of those I saw someone had one of those and they just they weren't mindful and in the end those items did get used for a period of time some of them some of them didn't but ultimately some of them became clutter so here we are at point number three and I'm going to give you an example of these three points in action in a moment I'll give you some homework but the third point is we need to create systems decluttering without creating a system afterwards to support the area without a designated area for each item without a reason for the item to be there without a system that helps maintain that area that is why we are failing at decluttering decluttering is only really just part of the process decluttering is multifaceted it's not just one big no one big activity. It really has many parts to it as I've talked about today. I think the most important thing is creating the systems, the systems that support each area of our home, the systems that support our life, the systems that make everything work for us, that make everything simple. The less stuff that we have in the system, the better it works, the easier it is to clean, the easier it is to organize, the easier it is to feel good about it. So that's number three. So instead of going straight in and getting rid of stuff, the first thing I do with my clients is we get organized. We pull everything out and we organize the space to work for the lifestyle. We put back into the space what we really need and then all the excess make decisions about. And it sort of organically sorts itself out. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just such a different way of looking things. And some people might say, well, this is double handling, but I'm telling you, for people that get overwhelmed, it's a way that works so well. It's like, this is the space. This is what I want. This is how I want it to work. Take everything out, create the system, put the things back in to the system, and then everything that's left out is not needed. Or it's in the wrong place. Or it needs to go into a different system. And remember the goal is, is to not just have less stuff, but it's to have more of what truly matters to us. So that when we go into our wardrobe, we look at our clothes and we go, we love these clothes. There's not things that are sitting there wrong size, wrong style, that are really outdated or ripped or torn, or we don't actually quite know why they're there. By living intentionally and mindfully, we can create an organized and simplified home that really supports our well-being and happiness. So my homework for you is, is to go and grab a small area, something that's really easy to organize, kitchen cupboard, a drawer, the entranceway, something like that, something small, something Something really easy and write down what is your end goal what do you want this to look like what would make you feel great about this area what's its purpose what's its style what's working at the moment what's not working at the moment how could you improve it then remove everything from the area and only put items back that are going to serve the purpose then categorize everything into like things create a system everything needs a space everything needs a delegated home you just need to know where everything goes you can look at an item and go oh this book it goes here so that's what we're looking for so once completed anything that remains needs to be decluttered it needs to leave your life or maybe it's in the wrong spot maybe it needs to go to another system another area of the house so do this now and then come back and look at your new in area and really enjoy it okay so that's all for today thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video you may also enjoy this video Otherwise, I will see you on the next video. It'll be a mixture of new content like this and a mixture of my old content as well. Please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you here. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. See ya. Bye.